We'll shift gears and talk a little bit about weather and some of what uh, what Jamie's talked about here. Uh, well, we'll follow up on because there have been some significant changes weather-wise. I'm sure uh, everyone's aware, but uh, we'll look at that a little bit where we were and then uh, where we're we're headed here. But I want to start off real quickly uh, looking at the last week. With all the warm weather late last week and over the weekend, our mean temperatures for the week on the left-hand side here turned out to be above normal. That, that isn't a surprise. Most areas about two to as many as five degrees above normal. Greatest departures were in western parts of the state. But uh, you can see in the far south and far eastern southeastern part of lower Michigan, we were pretty close to the climatological normals. The big news, of course, on the right-hand side here, looking at our precipitation. And, and uh, for most areas, we saw thunderstorms on Sunday, uh, last Sunday, and then uh, a period of, well, occasional showers and a couple rumbles of thunder on Monday. And that was uh, led to likely the most widespread, it is, the most widespread rainfall we've seen over Michigan here in, uh, well, several weeks doesn't really do it justice. You have to go back further. Uh, in my uh, house at Hazlitt, I had 34 hundredths of an inch uh, in a thunderstorm early Sunday evening. And then with several events on Monday, I had an additional six tenths. So the combined 94 hundredths that I got in about 24 hours. Had to go back and look. Uh, actually, was the heaviest precipitation, or certainly most significant precipitation uh, I've had here at Hazlitt since the beginning of April. So it had been uh, almost two months, and that's that was fairly common uh, in many areas. But again, looking at the map here, uh, the 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 green here, everything is greater than half an inch. Uh, there were uh, the heaviest rainfall totals you can see in northern lower portions of western upper and the southeastern lower where uh, many spots picked up over an inch. So again, uh, significant and widespread rainfall. The southwest part of lower Michigan, a little bit less, but even there still uh, we did uh, picked up some precipitation. So uh, great, well, well needed uh, and, and certainly couldn't and timing wise, we needed to needed the, the water, needed the precipitation. This reflects, I think, the important thing here. This reflects a change in the upper air pattern across North America. At least, at least a temporary change, allowing water vapor back up into the Midwest, uh, and and again something to set that off. We had a a big upper trough move through the area. Those things just have not happened. Uh, over the last several weeks, but we we now are in a pattern of much more frequent, uh, but more, more normal uh, west to east flow across the northern part of the uh, the continental U.S., which at a minimum should lead to more frequent chances of precip, and that's where I'm, I'm going next here, uh, again, at least for the short term. Uh, one last and uh, one more thing too about the dryness uh, and, and the drought conditions. I've got several maps up here, lots of color you can see here, but all of them, uh, again, the upper left is a short-term drought equivalent uh, blend uh, index. And on the upper right is our current drought monitor, which, which is a little bit dated now. And then on the bottom one, this is one you might not have seen. This is the, the new USDA CASMA uh, soil moisture anomaly product, which is a combination. Well, it's a lot of satellite data that goes into this, but uh, that's the one in the bottom here. But all of these collectively show Michigan is part of a, a large regional area of drought, and you can see it covers a good chunk of the uh, the Corn Belt. So we're not alone in this. Uh, the other thing of note here, I think, though, is, again, given that we did have some finally some water, uh, one is is that uh, one inch of uh, precip, even two inches in some cases of a rain that fell, that's not going to end uh, or or relieve all that we we have a long term deficit especially in central and southern areas of lower Michigan. And, and certainly timely and continued rainfall is needed to prevent any, any further uh, slippage or deterioration of conditions. That goes without saying. We've, we've used that soil moisture reserve that we, we like to re have to rely on in middle and latter parts of the season because of the extended dryness back to April. But the, the other part of this is too, uh, and and I, it, it goes back to some of, of Jamie's comments about where we are in 2023 uh, with, with the dry weather. But historically, climatologically, what we have observed here is, is pretty unusual. And uh, to give you an example on the upper left here in that short-term drought equivalent, the percentiles there, 
uh, we're talking about less than 5%. So uh, conditions that we would only be expected to see, another way of looking at this, once in 20 years, something like that. Pretty pretty rare, pretty unusual. Uh, so if it, it, it is has ex seemed extremes, it's because it is climatologically. And, and so, again, another reason why more rain and more frequent and timely rain will be needed here in the coming days. So where are we this morning? Well, uh, it's a nice segue to talk about more precipitation. Uh, right now, uh, in lower left-hand side here, you can see the current radar plus the surface map, but we have another weather disturbance approaching from the west, and uh, there's an area, there's two areas actually of of uh, showers and thunderstorms that are associated with this. One uh, moving across central and eastern portions of upper Michigan, uh, you can see that at the top here, and then another one down across areas of uh, central and southwestern lower. Both of these are on the leading edge of some moisture, some water vapor, again, which we've we've seen little of or relatively little of over the last several weeks, but uh, coming up from locations to our south uh, and uh, and a nice uh, nice area of convection is formed along that. Uh, we will see this. Both of these areas are going to move to the east southeast here over the next couple hours probably weaken as they move eastward but uh and and i can I, i'm uh, in hazlet this morning and i can hear a couple rumbles of thunder here outside so it's close i can i can verify that the radar is doing what it's supposed to be doing uh this could provide a, a quick quarter of an inch or so but many areas will see little it, the, these are not widespread or heavy rainfall producers, but at least again, the leading edge of the first round of precipitation. Now, after that goes through by the middle of the day, early afternoon, we probably will see another area develop here later uh, this evening into the overnight hours and move across the state once again. If that happens, likely, uh, again, similar areas will be impacted and the movement will be again, generally from Northwest to Southeast. So that's the next chance after this morning. Uh, one other other note here, as I'm sure everyone knows and appreciates, we've had an incredibly poor air quality over the last several years, uh, courtesy of many, many uh, forest and, and wildfires burning in um, portions of Canada. It's all from west to east across uh, the whole country, but some of that smoke from that and massive fires has made it uh, into the lower 48, including the Great Lakes region here over the last several days with, with really uh, some of the worst air quality we've observed here in the region in a long, long time. Uh, this is a, a uh, graphic here depicting where we are right now and the lighter colors here indicate high concentrations of particulate matter again that's that smoke that's that's drifted down from the north uh, into the Great Lakes region. Unfortunately, it will be here once again today, but uh, the better news, not as bad as what we saw certainly on Tuesday and maybe not as bad as yesterday, but it's still in the area will likely have some lingering smoke into the day tomorrow. And then the, it looks like from, from our forecast models that we'll finally see some improvement here by the time we get to the weekend. But uh, it's still around for another day. There are advisories and, and of course for people who have pre-existing conditions, this is a special risk uh, need to be inside if if possible uh, to, uh, to at least reduce the, the exposure or minimize the risk here associated with the bad air. By tomorrow, you can see a frontal boundary moving through lower Michigan here from west to east. And that will, again, provide at least the chance for some scattered showers or thunderstorms. Uh, it Probably more areas remain dry. The, the majority of areas will be dry. It'll just be a chance. That continues on into Saturday. Here's the map for Saturday. So basically a carbon copy. One difference that you will notice here over the next couple of days, it's gonna be warmer today. Uh, there's noticeably warmer. Most highs ranging from the upper 70s in the far northern part of the state uh, to a lot of mid and upper 80s today and tomorrow and then into the weekend. And we could push 90 uh, in a couple locations in the southern part of, uh, of lower Michigan. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see that. And and again, going back to, to, uh, to Jamie's comments here, we will see an increase in the dew point temperatures and certainly the humidity. So it will be it will become more uncomfortable uh, and we'll call it probably hot and humid works. We'll also see some of that next week. So more, more typical summer week as the 4th of July here approaches, it will become more uh, hot and humid. But almost a daily chance for showers and thunderstorms 
The bottom line, though, again, this is not, uh, we're not expected to see a, a large widespread rainfall producing type of event, but many areas will pick up some additional precip um, here before uh, the end of the holiday weekend and then continuing into early next week. In terms of how much, well, uh, you can see looking at the map here, this is through next Thursday morning, uh, a lot of, especially the northern part of the state uh, is, is some of the lowest the region here, less than a quarter of an inch expected there, and up to maybe three quarters of an inch across the south. So one take home here, definitely, and this is also important for other reasons, but the, the take home is, is over the next several days, most of the activity that we're going to see in the Midwest and in the region is going to be to our south. Uh, so the best chances in Michigan for seeing significant precipitation here in the short term are going to be across the southern lower peninsula. And, and again, looking at the map, here you can see another another related issue given that we have drought conditions over much of the region, which of course has caused major, had major impacts on our markets. Notice that for big chunks of the central corn belt, we are looking for the likelihood of at least two inches of rain. You could say this is a, a drought busting type of rainfall uh, event or a series or sequence. So major, major, at least at the, the influence and the potential impact here on the Corn Belt are big because uh, not only have they had significant and really serious problems with dryness and drought across the central Corn Belt, but the stages were more advanced, the crop growth stages, and uh, the vulnerability was higher in places like central Illinois than it was here and there has been in Michigan. So big implications here for overall in terms of our, our corn crop for this coming year and where we're going. And this this is fairly, this is pretty big news. So again, uh, quite a bit of rainfall expected here over the next several days in the middle of the Corn Belt. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, evapotranspiration rates, uh, we're still expecting to see elevated rates here for the upcoming week. And then quickly moving to uh, our medium range forecast guidance. Uh, this is the six to 10 day outlook. Eight to 14 day outlook is almost identical to this, but very, very important here. If you look at the jet stream pattern forecast, the lower left, notice that we have mostly west to east or zone flow. That has, that has been a, a rare to see that over the last couple of months. Uh, we've had big ridges and troughs and, and anomalous weather, either hot and dry or, or cool and unsettled, depending on where you are. But at least for the next one to two weeks, we're looking at a pattern like this. And what that strongly suggests, two things. One, warmer than normal mean temperatures. That's a really good bet. We'll definitely see that next week. Uh, the 4th of July week, and uh, more importantly, I think, long-term here, normal to probably above normal precipitation totals. And of course, we haven't been able to say that very often this season, but it is looking uh, more likely, at least for the next one to two weeks, we'll have more frequent chances for precipitation than we've had in a long time. Now, that said, the guidance also is hinting by the middle of July that we may see that blocky high amplitude with pattern over North America, upper air pattern with big ridges and troughs may return. Uh, and that, that of course, is a concern. It's a red flag and go back to some of the very unusual uh, persistent type weather patterns. And it could be it could be warm and dry. We do get a new updated outlook for the month of July coming out tomorrow, Friday the 30th. Uh, we'll be watching that closely. But right now, again, the guidance is is hinting or at least pointing by the middle of July that we go back to that big that blocky uh, high amplitude flow pattern and then well we don't want to see that but that right now that's what some of the the guidance certainly uh, is suggesting we'll talk more about that here next week so summarizing here an active weather pattern and a very summer like pattern here for the up upcoming uh, holiday 4th of July almost a daily chance for showers and thunderstorms best chances in the southern part of the state over the next next few days and warmer temperatures and we'll we'll use the word hot uh, as we move into well the next few days and certainly by the middle of next week right now the 4th of July uh, looking like uh, well a typical summer one uh, 80s to near 90 for high with uh, some scattered or isolated showers and thunderstorms possible and then as you just saw beyond that into the second week of July more warmer and uh, possibly wetter than normal conditions. And so uh, moving on here to introduce our speaker for next week, uh, virtual breakfast, We've got Dr. Young Suk Dong, 
uh, who's a, our, our extension agricultural irrigation specialist from uh, the Department of Biosystems and Ag Engineering on campus. And uh, Young Sook's going to be with us to talk about strategies for efficient water use. And of course, this year, uh, he's been in, in big demand. So with that, I'll turn back over to Phil to talk about credits. Thank you.